Hey, friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Gibbon, your host, and uh, Paige, my, my good friend Paige, is back. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing okay today. Uh, we're, we're off to a good start. We're, we're, we're going to make it a day. Oh, yeah. So last time we were talking about friends, um, and it's sort of easy to talk about your friends who think like you and, and are Christian like you, and sort of we, we talked about friends as the ones who are willing to share compassion and forgiveness, and those are our Christian virtues, but does this mean that all of your friends have to be Christian? Like, are you just supposed to avoid anybody that disagrees with you? Mm, no, you can have friends that aren't, aren't Christian. It's actually a really good thing to have friends that aren't Christian, because how else are you going to like kind of sharpen your beliefs? And by hearing things that other people have to say, it kind of gets you thinking about what you're saying and how you can either relate to that person or how you're a little bit different and different is okay. Like you don't have to agree 100% with everything that someone says in order to be friends with them. Right. I think that's a, an important question about identity. Like, do you have to agree with everything a person does to love them? Or can you love somebody who you, you disagree with? Um, you can love somebody who who you disagree with. That it's it's simple, but but sort of even more than that, it, it's a question of value. Um, like, do you think that like your value comes only after you were a Christian, or did God love you while you were still His enemies? And the scriptures here are are, are clear. And so, if if the only people worth being friends with are the ones who already believe the right things, then Jesus did it wrong. Well, if Jesus did it wrong, you probably you're probably not making the best Christian confession in the first place. But rather, the idea is simply the whole world is full of people that Jesus died for. Some of them believe yet, and some of them don't believe yet. And it's not your job to fix that, but it's also not your job to run away from everybody who doesn't already think like you think. Like, like you said, um, when you only talk with people who you already agree with, it's, it's easy to sort of fall into an echo chamber where your, your beliefs get a little bit less secure because, well, they're not ever sharpened against anything. They're, they're never actually forced to, to sort of prove themselves to, to be solid and, and real. And so they can get a little bit wonky, if you want to actually learn your faith, grow to be a, a better Christian, actually talk with somebody who doesn't believe like you and not to convince them, not to win an argument, but simply to, can my beliefs actually withstand somebody who, who doesn't believe in them yet? And surprisingly enough, they can. There's a way to talk about all of this stuff without just trying to win an argument or offending somebody or anything like that. But there, there actually are ways to, to simply live your life and, and confess your faith as a Christian in, in a way that really does love your neighbor that's a good thing not a bad thing yeah and um, a lot of people I know I used to think this way that if I was talking to somebody who wasn't Christian and they asked me a question that I didn't know how to answer at the moment that's like oh no I'm a bad Christian no not that's no you just go and you learn it's like oh I never thought about that particular issue let me it's always okay you don't have to give someone a yes or no answer right away you can say let me think about that that's a perfectly okay answer and especially when you're talking to friends who aren't christian or share different beliefs like that's how you learn and that's how you grow and right. you can grow together with that as well right you can say i don't know let me ask my pastor let me let me see what what he says and we can talk about this more um but the the simple reality is that inside of this world, um, if you only sort of see your friends as people you need to convince about Jesus, they sort of stop being your friends that you suffer with and forgive, and they turn into the objects of, of your works. They're the objects of your learning enough or witnessing enough or praying enough or any of the things that you do. But friends are not your objects. Your friends are your friends. Yeah. If you, if you just treat them like, oh, if I can tell them we're doing something to get them into my car and take them to church instead. Like that's, that's, that's one that's dishonest. Are you, um, are you two... tricking people into like a pool party that turns into a baptism page? Cause that's not okay. Um, <laughs> no, that's not okay. Don't do right. that. So um, instead of that, what, what you can, what you can do is say like, these are the, these are the things I believe. And I, I understand that there's, there's a, a room for discussion in this. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but I have called by the Holy Spirit. So if you can't make a decision for Jesus, why is it your job to convince other people to make a decision for Jesus? Just again, love your friends, have compassion for your friends and forgiveness for your friends. And this is this is Christian witness. Um, and let the Holy Spirit do his job. He's better at it than you. So so you can you can relax and just worry about loving your friend. Uh, last time we said, you know, your friend isn't your therapist, but also in the same time, uh, you aren't your friend's Holy Spirit. 
you might be the thing the Holy Spirit uses to witness to your friend, but you don't have to make that your burden. You get to let that be your gift. He'll do it in his time and, and in his way. Yeah. And I think that's something that people miss a lot is they're like, oh, well, if I'm friends with this person, then I have to make sure that they're Christian too, because, you know, God calls us to make disciples of all nations. It's like, yeah, that's, that's part of it, but it's the Holy Spirit that, you know, it's the one that moves. It's not you moving. If you tried to move everything, you'd be stuck for an awfully long time. Uh, and and God wants it even more than you. Um. So when we get to talk about then the, the, the gift of friendship, you get to measure it then. And, and you're right. If somebody's friendship is, is contingent on you leaving your faith, that's not a friend because that's not somebody willing to suffer with you and forgive you. But but if if your friend is simply somebody who believes differently than you, well, that doesn't stop you from believing. And in fact, like I said, it, it's, it's a chance to learn how to express and, and live inside of your faith in a way that actually stands as an armor against the world and, and not simply something you have to protect from the world. Yeah. And I mean, I can't think of a greater blessing than having those conversations either. Like, you know what you believe and it's so joyful to share it with other people, but if they're not ready to hear it or are very closed off, like that's not something that you should ever force either, because then you get the, you know, stereotypical Bible thumpers are like, you must believe this book. And that's not good either. Well, that's not how you were brought to faith. And so why are you going to subject somebody else to that? Um, but, but instead, you get to recognize that the greatest gift is that God has promised that none will be lost. And so in his own time and in his own way, he will accomplish these things. Sometimes you get to watch and sometimes you don't. But in all of it, though, what, what you get to have are, are people in this world that, that you can learn from, even if they don't believe like you do, because they'll give you a chance to, to sort of learn more. They'll, they'll give you a different perspective to put your faith up against and, and watch how it stands and grows. Um, and, and in all of it, you get people who you get to love and be loved by. Um, that that's that's a gift that that um, God does not simply reserve love for the Christians, but th this is one of those things where you don't have to actually be a Christian mother or father to love your children. You don't have to be a, a Christian doctor to love your patients by by doing a good job for them. And in the same way, um, vocation in, in this this way is not bound to Christianity. It, you see a fullness of it inside of Christianity. But at the same time, can you be friends with people who believe differently than you? Yeah, you absolutely can. And it can be a very, very rewarding thing. Um, it, it's a chance to grow. It's a chance to love. It's a chance to, to be loved. And, and in all of that, it's a gift. Yeah, because every everyone has something to offer everybody in terms of like experience and time and all the things that we were talking about with friendship on the previous episode and just to discount them simply because they're not a christian is kind of doing you and them a disservice right so uh yeah have friends their gifts Paige, mm -hmm. you got anything else no i think that's all i've got i'll see you next time bye bye friend <laughs>